Hey guys, I'm Jinx and welcome back to uh, Ken Follows the Pillars of the Earth, or Ken Play, whatever, Pillars of the Earth book 2. Uh, turns out I need to record one more episode, so back we are. <laughs> um, I mean, for you it makes no difference anyway. I just noticed something though, because I closed the game, right? I noticed we, we have an achievement called Stay Together. Or, or together or something. It was an achievement about these two being uh, staying together. And only like 18% of people had that. So I'm curious if... If... Um, if you can actually... Like... If they can go s two separate ways. I didn't... I don't... I didn't think like that would be possible. Anyway. Uh, Elena's notes on trading. To negotiate a good price and to make a profit, first stress the quality of the goods. Whatever you can think of, know your goods, and then, once the partner is willing to negotiate, do not ask for too much. Asking twice the amount for the initial offer will likely result in a bad deal. Being too humble, on the other hand, will make your goods seem cheap and your offer uninteresting. Suggesting a reasonable price, somewhat higher than what you originally, um... Uh, than, than what you really want is likely to result in a counteroffer and a good deal. Remember, be smart. Know only, not only when you sell, but also when you buy. Otherwise, there will be no profit. Right. Okay. So, stress the quality of the goods first, and then ask for a bit, a bit more money, but not too much. I know. Sell the wool. Hurt the Flemish... Hurt... Heard the Flemish pay quite some coin for English quality. They, they say it's the weather that makes our sheep good, I guess. Might be a valuable train. Philip! An elephant, what the fuck? <laughs> Richard. Still easily exhausted by hard work. But bargaining with the shepherds gave him confidence. I'm proud of him. Pray nice. that he'll pay what the shepherds promised. You think they lied to us? It wouldn't have been the first time. Hmm. Monk. He looks nicer than Ralph. Still, I don't trust monks anymore. It's too easy to abuse a reputation. Yeah. What's his problem? He keeps looking over. Who knows? Market stall. Cages, pouches, barrels. Nothing that'd be important right now. I have, I have my card to carry wares. A uh, wool cart. Whoa. A wool sample. Nice. Looks impressed. Will he buy it all? Our first big sale. Mind showing me a piece of your stock? I'd like to establish the quality before I make any promises. Of course. Hmm. Not bad. That's quite some wool you've brought along. I hope you're not planning to set up shop here too. <laughs> Meg would kill me if I let you. We came to sell, not compete. We came to sell this wool to you, not to compete with you. It comes from the shepherds near Huntley. They gave it to me so they wouldn't have to come here themselves. I see. All right. I'll give you a pound per sack for this. What? <laughs> Only a pound? Ah, that's a fair price. Well, uh, not fair for that quality. But if he... What? I mean... I don't want to agree, so... But I paid more for this. I'd sell at a loss. Hmm. How much did you pay? One and a quarter pounds per sack. It was almost all I had. The rest I had to spend on the cart and the toll at the gate. <sighs> Then you let yourself be overcharged. What? I can't pay for your mistakes, can <laughs> I? You have to handle that yourself. Ali, let me handle this. Don't. Okay. Don't intimidate him, though. I don't want that to be the lesson you learned. Your money would not only pay for the war, but also fund our fight to reclaim our earldom. Oh. If you pay us more, I shall never forget that courtesy. More greatly repay you once I'm back in charge of Shiring. 
I may even allow you sole access to our own wool production. That's a lofty promise. And it would hardly cost you. Mm. So, you two are the son and daughter of the Earl of Shiring? We are. But you're just children. Philip we will make back. a coin, and I will become a knight fighting for glory and honor until the king grants us back our noble inheritance. <sighs> That may all be very well, but I can't pay you more than what I already offered. Then I'll prove that the wool's quality is worth the price. Just let me look at it once more. <sighs> <laughs> okay. We've got to work out what signifies high quality. Maybe if we remember what the shepherd said. It's from a good breed of sheep, they said. What else? Um... And other wool looks greasy, not ours. It's dry, light and soft. Okay. The wool is pretty strong too. It holds together well. That's all I remember. Yeah, me too. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so it's, it's from a good breed. It's not greasy, it's light and soft, but it also holds together strong. Yo, dude, I have the sickest quality on this fucking card of wool, my dude. Have you thought it over? It's totally too beautiful. <laughs> so just pray. Praise the wool first. It's clean. Wool is often full of grease and dirt. But this batch was scoured very thoroughly. It's very clean and soft. Hmm. Even picky customers would be delighted. That is true. It's dry. In this weather, some cartloads of wool would arrive damp. I made sure that this is dry and undamaged. It's light and easy to transport. Mm, and customers are hesitant to buy wet wool. It's also strong. Some sheep produce brittle fibre, but this wool is strong. Its sheep had good, healthy lives. Mm hmm. It's suitable for finer and durable fabrics. All right. What pricing did you have in mind? Well, humble, risky, reasonable. Well, if we if we ask ask for a reasonable price, if we take the risky thing, I don't want to do that because two pounds is steep. But we paid we paid one and a quarter. So if we ask for a reasonable, pr reasonable price of one and a half, we might end up settling on one and a quarter. Which wouldn't be profit, but it wouldn't be a loss either. And for a first sell, I think that'd be quite good, right? Actually, that yeah, for a first big sell. So reasonable. One pound and ten shilling per sack then. <sighs> But tell you what, I'll give you one and a quarter pounds for every sack. You've brought up some good arguments. Your wool is exquisite. Of course it is. Ah, uh, but not a penny more, all right? Yeah, I'll agree to that. It's it's not a loss, at least. It's not yes, a profit either. Agreed. Better than one a and loss. a quarter pounds it is. Very good. Just so you know, if my mistress gets angry, I'll have you tell her the same things you told me. Hmm. <laughs> Whoa. Thank you for your business. Yes, three hands. We've done it, Ali. Well, we've received as much as we paid, but at least I negotiated a better price. Yeah. I know why Meg likes you, Aliena. You're just as ruthless as her. Don't be so hard on yourself. My friend, Milius, says that a good bargain needs a lot of foresight and experience. Yo, he has four hands. Can I help you? Forgive me, I Sorry. didn't mean to barge in, but... You are the Lady Aliena of Shiring, are you not? I am. Yes, I am. And I'm Lord Richard, Earl Bartholomew's son. My name is Philip of Gwyneth. I am the Prior of Kingsbridge. Ah, oh, I've heard of you. You helped a lot of people after the Hamleys attacked my father's castle. We only did what was right. I met your father. My father knew many people. Not all of them were his allies. I know. I'd like to invite you to come to Kingsbridge. Our own wool trade has fallen somewhat into neglect, God forgive, 
But we have plenty of sheep. I am sure we could come to an agreement. You want us to be merchants? B but I sold at a loss. You wouldn't work for me. You would work with me. I can see that you are not afraid of hard work. I don't know a single novice who would have been willing to pull a cart like that on his own. <laughs> you may have made losses, but that only means there is more to learn for you. My friend, Brother Milius, would be delighted to speak with you. He always goes to markets for our priory. All right. What do you say? I'll consider it. Um, Please I'm do I'm consider in. my offer. You will be most welcome in Kingsbridge. It is the least I can do. Thank you, Father. Not much later, I found a home in Kingsbridge. Yep. And I remember now when I got there, we're all caught up. There was Jack. You. I remember you. You're the boy with no father. Actually, I have two fathers now. <laughs> Is that so? Yes. Tom Builder and Jack Sherberg. And then the days just went by. Did they? Little did I know that the best and the worst was yet to come. Hmm. Chapter 9, The Oath. Long chapter, huh? Fucking loud again. Alright, what you did. Oh, Alright, a lot happened. Yeah, long chapter. You knocked at your old townhouse and found the Hamleys living in it. Yeah. Uh, you found a place to sleep for the night, luckily. Because we, find a, we found a nice man. Uh, who let us stay in his home. Your feet ached from the journey. Yeah, no wonder. You confidently swore the oath. You saw your father one last time. You saved Richard's, Richard's life. But you're both in shock. Still in shock. Could he have actually died? Is that why you have that achievement? Of staying together? Like, maybe they could have gone two separate ways after... If you don't swear the oath, and maybe he can die. What the fuck? You paid the shepherd one and a quarter pounds for each sack of wool. You negotiated a better price for the wool, but still sold at a loss. Well, I mean, we didn't sell the loss, but we didn't sell the profit either. So we sold at a... You know. Same price. Anyway. Philip was invited. has invited you to come to Kingsbridge, and I think that always happens. Nice! All right, let's continue onward. Chapter 10. Right? I mean, yes. Five years later. Okay. Jesus, 1141. So, you have returned from Rome, Bishop Whaleran. Yes, it was a very illuminating time. What do you want? The Pope was very pleased to hear how I and you have worked together in the past to support our king. We did not do it for your church. He was less pleased, however, to hear about the bargain you struck with the Prior of Kingsbridge. Why should he care? Once and for all, we will not support you in your personal quarrels. The deal we made with the Priory of Kingsbridge has the blessing of the King. Of course, and you would never change your mind on that matter. Tell me, has your son returned from the Holy Land yet? What? We have not heard from him. Ever since he set out to join that crusade of yours. If he dies, your church will be responsible. Do not underestimate your son, Lady Hamley. That would be a great mistake. I don't like him. Chapter 10. Um, The Rise of Kingsbridge. Wow, they made good fucking progress in, in five years. I thought it would take like 15 to get it. It looks almost done-ish. No, there's a... Like the entire front of it is missing. You could see all the wood. Okay. Still, goddamn. So... Not long now and you'll have a ceiling. Wonderful. Then we will no longer have to hold our services in the crypt. <laughs> is that Alfred? You could even begin to plan the paintings for the wooden ceiling and the walls. Why a wooden ceiling? So the whole thing goes up in flames again? Hmm. Good question. 
Philip decided on that because it's cheaper. And these walls can only hold the weight of a wooden ceiling. I love you like a brother, Alfred, but the apprentice shouldn't have to tell the master craftsman things like that. <laughs> Jack, for once, focus on your work and finish it. Just for once. Or you'll stay an apprentice for the rest of your life. <laughs> Don't Everybody's argue a family. again. Don't be dexter. Alfred is right. This is a house of God. <sighs> All right. Now, where were we? Oh, you damn can it. start planning the paintings for the ceiling if you wish. Damn it! Well, we are can just we afford apprentice. that at the moment. We are paying so many workers already. And the is here. Tom Builder. Alfred. Ah, Aliena. How are you? <laughs> that draws I'll be attention. moving my wool to Shiring today. The fleece fair starts tomorrow. Ah, I almost forgot. Milius and I have already arranged everything. We'd make much more of a profit if Percy Hamley had not raised the taxes this week. Again? <sighs> uh. Jonathan! Jonathan, you shouldn't wander off. Stay with us. Tom is right. You hear? He looks like a real monk. Obvious Plovius. Nominee, Patri, Amen. Hmm. That sounds like Latin, but it's not quite right yet. But he'll, he'll get there. In time. We would not have to worry about this if we could sell our wool here on our market. The king would have to grant us a license for that. And the Hamleys wouldn't like that, I'm afraid. They want the taxes from the fair in Shiring. Don't worry, we'll make a good profit. It's a good year. We've never moved this much wool as it is. <laughs> Everybody's looking at us. Uh, well, I jack. Uh, oh, and I have to build a new storage house. Alfred is a master craftsman now. If you can pay him, he'll help you. Ah, very good. Jack keeps looking over every chance he gets. If she hadn't a business of her own, I'd hire her to work for me. <laughs> she is something. She would make me a good wife. Hey! Hmm. Hey, take that back! <laughs> what? What did I say? For the last time, stop your quarreling! Philip, let's look at the plans again. There's a problem I have to discuss with you. All right. Take that back, Alfred. Jack, leave him alone. And for once, finish your work. And Jack, please keep an eye on Jonathan, will you? Mm, sure. What? Why me? <laughs> finish your work, Jack. Oh, great. <laughs> Now he's starting with it, and immediately... That's how it always off. was. But on that day, I didn't care. On that day, I was going to see Aliena. And I was going to tell her how I felt. Oh. oh. And nothing and no one would stop me. I hope that's true. I have to see Aliena. I wonder where she is. Alfred... <laughs> will regret what he said about Eliana. Tom insists I finish my... Okay. Unfinished horrible. Never finish things? Tom is in for a surprise. Question is, finish it now or later? We should do it now. Jonathan, Jonathan spends too much time with monks. Wonder when he'll ask about his father. Remember the winter he was born. Let's talk to him. Hey, little brother. <laughs> Talk about looking up for make faces. Make faces. 
Talk about looking out for him. I hope you appreciate that I look out for you. I ate a beetle. <laughs> Don't tell Philip, all right? It's our secret. You ate a beetle? Let's make faces again. <laughs> okay. Now let's get up and let's finish the work. Um, just so it's out of the way. Uh, continue work now. Hopefully it won't take too long and hopefully Jonathan won't run off. Time to get this even done. Even though I think he will. Damn it. Damn it. What? Did I mess up three times? I thought I got this third one. Never mind. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and I almost missed that big ass one too. Okay. Are we done? Uh. Uh. <laughs> what? This could be better. Sure. Somehow could... I can't focus today. And the face still isn't right. I can never get the face right. I'm done for now. You are? I just can't stand looking at it anymore. Oh, damn. Watch your tongue. <laughs> I will. I need to get much better at this. I can never get the expression right. That's not humility, sorrow, and dignity. It looks surprised. A surprised corbel. Useless. <sighs> <laughs> okay, face isn't right yet. Philip asks, asks for humbleness, love, and sorrow. Need to get much better. Okay. The Bible Philip wants me to read and my trusty slingshot. I. to. to uh, this thing. We'll go up over the entrance. Everybody will see it. Doesn't feel finished yet. Can we finish it? The Tree of Life. When I was small, I wanted something with animals. I tried to make it look like no other tree, more like a thought. I like it, but nobody recognizes that it's supposed to be a tree. Oh. Well, Tom says it's done. He won't let me do another one. All right. Cool. So you did that. That's that's pretty good. Uh, workers on scaffold. Alfred doesn't. Alfred doesn't get it. These walls will only hold a wooden ceiling. They aren't meant to hold stone. Can we talk to them? Hey up there! Hey down there! <laughs> Alright, cool. Crack. Crack crack keeps on coming back. Mortar might be the problem. But why they why here? Not even Tom knows. Yeah, it's the same place as before. Why? The wall is already coming apart, and Alfred wants to put a stone ceiling on top instead of a wooden one. Hmm. <laughs> Idiot. Into the crypt. Uh, Jonathan. Why don't we have some fun? Everything all right, Jonathan? <laughs> let's have some fun. Come on, let's have fun. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, I can. What, have fun? Come on, Philip said you can't. You have to work. I know what they said. I was there, you know. <laughs> Explain why not working is alright. Let's just make faces. <laughs> alright. I mean, I don't think we can continue. Can we continue working? I'm done. I just can't stand... Okay, well, we can't. I messed up, and I'm not allowed to retry. Oh, he follows us. That's good. St. Adolphi rats. It's a big one. Vile creatures. Huh. Don't scoff at the rat. And away it goes. It's well, gone. Where did it go? Hmm. There must be some kind of cavity behind that wall. The foundations and the whole crypt were part of the old cathedral. 
Who knows what secrets are hidden down here? Hmm. Saint Adolphius, crypt survived the fire, almost a miracle. More reasons for pilgrims to come. Nice. Philip says he's only resting. <laughs> if Adolphus ever wakes up, he'll be in for quite a surprise. He's a long way from home. I wonder if I'll ever get to see a faraway place like Cordoba. Where did it go? What is behind that wall? Crypt and foundation are old. Oh. Huh. It's gone. Okay, you said this before. Can we, like... Mm, I should go back to work soon. Hi? <laughs> Hello, rat. Anything else down here? Mm, oh, plans. Tom thought Alfred... Uh, Tom taught Alfred and me... All about the cathedral. I could draw these plans in my sleep. Alfred doesn't get most of it. Huh. Alright. Well, that looks like that's about it. For here. Unless we can talk to Jonathan down here. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Let's leave the crypt then. And... Can we finish work now? Maybe we took a break? What? Mm. Mm. What? Finish work? I'm done. I just can't- Alright, fine. Fine. What else is there? Wasp's Nest. Wasn't here a few days ago. Last year they killed a sheep. What? Go for Jonathan. Jonathan I better not get, get too close. close. The crypt, Jonathan. Okay. Uh, to the market then. Let's see what's. Uh, let's see what we can find here. This is cool. The future, you know, big time jump. We can explore everything. Kingsbridge Cathedral. Still being built, ob obviously. Work. Oh, there we are. Jonathan, don't run off. Hmm. <laughs> Don't worry, he's here. Oh, oh, great. Thank you, Martha. And no, I don't have time to watch him. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, no. It's all broken. <laughs> the sounds of the market. Shouldn't you be working, Jack? No. Eh, Who is maybe that? I should go before I buy anything. Who is that? Watch where you go, will you? Now it's come to that. Even the monks step on my chickens. That didn't look like one of our monks. Entertain Jonathan. Let's entertain Jonathan. Do you want to buy some of this fine cloth, Jonathan? Great idea. I can make you a red robe. Or a blue one. No. <laughs> no, that would be silly now, wouldn't it? What is the color that monks wear? Brown? Black and hmm. How's business? So, how's business? All well? More and more people keep coming here. Yesterday, there were two dozen merchants from Shiring alone. You exhausted? Pretty much. But the Priory made a lot of money. Seems the Earl just raised the taxes at his market, so they all came here instead. Now hmm. they've all returned to Shiring for the Fleece Fair. Is the Earl asking lower taxes at the Fleece Fair? On the contrary. From what the merchants told me, it's even worse. So they all have to trade their wool there, including Aliena and the Prior. But you need a license to do a Fleece Fair, and only Shiring has one. Hmm. And you're not going to the Fleece Fair? Are you not going to the Fleece Fair in Shiring? No. Philip asked me to supervise the market here. So now you're working with Philip and Aliena? I know, it's a lot of work. But we all want the same thing, after all. And what's that? To keep this place in good shape. This is our home. Yeah, I guess. You should be working too. I'm just taking a break. How do you get along with Alfred? How do you get along with Alfred? He usually only talks to me when he wants me to cook for him. Why would you keep cooking for him? He doesn't have a wife. And he's my brother. I wouldn't ask you to cook for me. Mm. 
Jonathan wouldn't either, and he's your brother too. Jack, no one's supposed to know. Don't worry, he's a little monk. He is everyone's brother. <laughs> there. Did you see Aliena? Hmm, maybe she was heading home. I think she's expecting a visitor. A visitor? Do I hear jealousy in your voice? Uh, no. I, I, I don't know name. what you're talking about. <laughs> Aliena went home. Could be. I know she's expecting a visitor. Okay. And the Maybe I should get going. Oh, before I forget, I have a message for you. Message from oh from Ellen. Yeah, I was wondering where she was. Pop, I need to talk to you. I will be at the small clearing near the river. Huh. I think Ellen wants to talk to you about Papa. What's there to talk about? Oh. Tom doesn't believe I can be a builder. That's not true. That's what she wants to talk about. Papa knows what you can do. He told her. Oh, did he? Yes. He's complicated. He mm. is. On days like this, you can almost get lost here. Map of Kingsbridge. Ah, nice. 1141. Honestly, that should have been a, a giveaway because there's an the other map, the older one, said 1130 whatnot. So uh, that should have been a giveaway that there will be other years as well. Elena's house is all the way over here. Okay. It's a village of Kingsbridge, obviously. We're currently in the marketplace. Kitchen is still where it used to be. So is the guest house, gate, obviously. Stables and house of the prior crypt as well. Cemetery is still the same. There is a river. Clearing by so she means this clearing, right? Toll Hut Bridge is all the same, and so is the mill. Chapter House 2. Well, no, Chapter House is over here now. Is that the same place? I don't know. Most of it is is pretty similar, obviously. It's the main but difference is the actual cathedral. The Hamleys would be breaking the agreement we had with King Stephen. What? All I know is that suddenly the quarry master wants us to pay for stone. And the verderer of Shoot Forest now insists we pay for timber. What? The verderer and the quarry master both claim that they act on orders from the Earl of Shiring. If our workers find out, they'll get nervous. And rightly so. Of course, this oh. is a terrible problem. It is. But I can assure you that we will be safe for the next few weeks. I've planned ahead for a case like this. You have? There are always bound to be shortages. We can pay our workers and there's enough stone and timber for a month. If it weren't for you, we'd be lost now. <laughs> but our problem remains. I must talk to the Earl. Indeed. But first, we need to talk to the workers. They need to know. I agree. Alright, it's good that you're not keeping it a secret then. Okay, goddamn. That's a big problem and i don't think it's a surprise that both timber and stone suddenly have to cost anything anyway that's gonna be it for this episode um next time eliana and more exploration and maybe even uh finishing work <laughs> we'll see uh yeah see you next time hope you does it